Hi, I'm Jeff, and you're here. Before we get started, Black Lives Do Have and Will Always Matter, there'll be links in the description for you to check out. And just remember, it is our responsibility to protect black women every single day. All right, it's about that time to give y'all a wrap up, eat some wings, and drink some wine. So, let's go. I'm going to get into all of this, but I really want to taste the food. We're going to get into the space of the food, but let's pray over it first, okay? Bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, bless the food. Bless the hands that prepared it. May it be nourishing to my body and healing to my heart. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Ashe and amen again, okay? Oh, Lord, I got to tell you about the food first. There's a lot going on, okay? How this came to be is there are a lot of, like, bookish foodies on Nancy Pelosi's internet and yet I have not seen a wrap up mukbang baby you always eating right before your videos anyway I like to drink wine I like to eat wings and the day of the week that start with W is Wednesday so how about it okay the wine we have today is Mia Dosia it's a Moscato Got little mango pieces in it because you know I'm fancy or whatever. This is from King Cobb's Kitchen. If you are in the Philadelphia area, he is a young black personal chef who does flash platters every Friday. And he also does, he also caters and he also does meal prep. He had chicken wings as one of his options. And I said, baby, my first wings is going to be from you. Sorry, my sides, mac and cheese and sweet potatoes. Well, yams. Child, I'm just, this food is just so good. I'm not even. I just, maybe if I put the, the mac and cheese. What? I haven't even tasted the wings yet, y'all. I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed with flavor. Let me just... Let me taste these wings, child. Then we're going to get into the books. First of all, these wings are humongous. Oh my god, okay. Sorry, y'all. Just give me a little bit of time. Oh my word. This is giving me Cajun Korean fried chicken. Baby. Even if you're not from Philly. You gotta make a trip. You just gotta make a trip. <clears throat> okay. Who child? Hold on, y'all. We gonna get to it. I promise you we finna get to it. I just need light. This is the last bite. Wow. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to do. But let's get into get into this review child. This wrap up. I don't even I can't even speak. I'm just so floored. So the first book that I read, okay. So this book I gave 4.2 stars to. Y'all, this book was so good. Now let's get into it, okay? So basically, what is her name, child? Avery Grams. She is this high school student. Um, her mom recently died. She lives in her car right now. Gets a letter one day. And somebody comes up to her and it was like, are you Avery Graham? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, okay, well, the, they're like, yeah, the Hawthorne family is requesting to see you. 
and she's like for what and they're like okay well mr hawthorne is dead and they need to read the will so she goes okay well then read the will that got to do with me they're like well baby you in the will she said i'm in the will i don't know mr hawthorne or nothing she goes to get the will read and it's like his daughter i want to say his wife was there well his widow uh, his grandsons are there i think it's like five of them she's like all right cool like i don't know this man there's no way that he's my father because he's old so was really gooey okay they're reading the contents of the will the um the grandsons are getting like a million dollars that they will be able to that they'll have access to when they're 18 and she's like oh snap a million dollars that's lit for y'all that's real lit she's looking around and everybody's looking like a million dollars like way but yeah basically nobody was getting the money they thought they were getting now they he had a favorite grandson they thought that he was gonna get all the money and when they read that he was only getting a million dollars he was like what is going on whatever and they get to avery the the will lady is reading the thing and she goes everything else all of my charity work all of the money that i <clears throat> am worth which is 46.2 billion dollars that is his estates all his estates that's the value of his philanthropic work that is literally this whole man goes to avery grams now this is like whomst everyone everyone else is like whomst as well and they're like, well, baby, this is the final will. She gets all the money. The catch is, though, she has to live in the mansion for a full year before she can get the money. From go Going from her car to a mansion doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal. But the second catch is that she has to live there with the family. Now, the family's upset. They feel jilted out of this money. He didn't give them any money for real. Now, it's like... Now we got to live with this girl who done stole from us, right? And of course people are upset. Oh, we're going to figure out what happened. We're going to take this to court. We need a, This is a legal matter. And her lawyer is like, baby, this is the final will. Like, he wrote this right before he died, right? So sis moves in with her, uh, with her half-sister. She lives in the house. She, you know, she isn't really fitting in because now she has to like take media classes she has to she just wants to you know lay low and be inconspicuous for this year so she can get her money get her get well she had two potential love interests so get some get that bread then leave peace out but baby that's not what happens this man done put a riddle in the house that she has to figure out what they mean, what's going on, what's really tea. This book, for the first book that I read this year, baby, this book was really good, full of like just intrigue in general. It was very, very well written. I should have read this last year, but I'm so glad I read it this year because this book, this book was fire. And that's it next i read how it went down by kekla magoon let me eat a little bit of chicken before we get into this one ciao How it went down by Kekla Magoon. This book I gave four stars to. It is very good. So it follows it follows the loved ones of 16-year-old Tariq Johnson who was shot and killed by a, a white man named Jack Franklin. He went to the convenience store for his mom and he also bought a snickers bar for his little sister but anyway he kind of like gets into a conversation with this other white man 
And next thing you know, Jack Franklin just heads out of his car and shoots him. Shoots him twice in broad daylight, gets in his car and drives away. Now, some people said that he had a gun. Some people said that he didn't have a gun. He, some people say that he was in a gang. Some people are saying that he wasn't in a gang. Okay, so this book tell, um, is told in the perspective of several of his loved ones. So his mom, his grandma, his sister, his best friend, his current best friend, two of his childhood best friends, his enemy, the girlfriend of his enemy who was the last person to see him alive, the civil rights activist slash reverend who came to the to the community to bring the media attention to this the girl who ends up helping him there's like a few other people i believe but those are the like main people that i remember some people are saying that he they saw a gun in his pocket but when they went to investigate there was no gun at all this book is scarily accurate to what actually goes on when a black man is killed you know there's many people saying like there are people saying one thing and then other people saying another thing and then you have your Reverend Al Sharpton-esque character who comes in and just gets the media involved and stuff it's again just really accurate to what actually goes on when a black man is killed by the white man in terms of the media and in terms of people saying one thing and people saying another thing and people who are trying to dig up dirt on the deceased, the victim. I was reading the book and it was like I was reading about Tamir Rice. It was like I was reading about Trayvon Martin. It was like I was reading about Philando Castile. Yeah, four stars. Really good read. I enjoyed how it made me feel and I enjoyed the, the parallels that I was um, picking up from it. So yeah, four stars. Next, I read Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nian. Chow. This was my highest rated book this month. I gave this 4.6 stars. If I round up, it'd be a 5 star. This book. Let's get into it. Let me take a sip of wine first, child, because this book follows Lay. Now, Lay, she is a beautiful girl with beautiful eyes. That's very important because one day she's just living her best life with her father and Tien and this man and this like half lizard man come up and they're like, we're going to take her to be a paper girl. I also have to put the table down because the lighting was really just upsetting me and my homegirls. But back to Girls of Paper and Fire. They like convinced, because I think there's only supposed to be like eight paper girls. And so she would have been the ninth one. They convince her, um, like the headmistress, to allow her to be a paper girl. But then like one of the paper girls ends up running away. So then it's back to eight anyway. And you know, she's taking classes on how to be, I guess, a good concubine. And one day the king calls for her. She's like, I'm not trying to sleep with this man. I'm not trying to sleep with any man, but she didn't know that at that point yet. But she was like, I'm not trying to sleep with this old man. She gets there. They're talking. He's making her feel good. He done brought all her favorite foods, honey. And when it's time for the coitus, she dips. She said, I know you lie. She hits that man and runs out. She gets caught. She gets beat up. And she gets tortured a little bit by her headmistress. So now she's all, I gotta play by the rules. I gotta, you know, do what I gotta do. But of course she's being real defiant because at the end of the day, this is not what she wants. She develops a crush. She makes a few friends, Ayoki, for example, which bless her poor little heart because honestly, it's the Stockholm Syndrome for me because she really was like, I love this king and he loves me and we finna get married and we finna have all these babies but the gag is he couldn't all i'm saying is that everybody thought that it was the girls that the, the wife thought that she couldn't have babies and that's the reason why he was taking concubines in the first place but the reality of the situation is that 
this man couldn't do anything right and that included uh giving the people an air honestly i don't give a flying for shit about this man and that's on mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow because this man really like anyway aoki was in love with him i i, I thought i was reading um um princess and the, nope i was gonna say princess and the frog baby i thought I thought I was reading Beauty and the Beast at this point because she was just in love with him. Oh, he's going to leave his wife and marry me and I'm his best friend and he listens to me and he cares about what I have to say. And oh, yes, it was hard the first time and it hurt the first time, but it got better. And I love him. I love him. And Lay was just looking at her like... Who we getting into? Blue? I never wanted to see a character die more in my life. Well, no, 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 because I wanted to see the king. I just wanted one good time. Let's move on. I don't want to dwell on the negative people of this book. But I felt really strongly for my dislike, my hatred, my uh, disapproval of Blue and her sassy remarks and her oh, she was just and she was a snitch she was like an op and everything and I said ma'am this is not what you want and you lucky I'm not a paper girl because I would have torn you to pieces that this was like the best book I read all month next we have They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman and the only thing I have to say about this book is actually no they didn't Let's get to it. This book, it wasn't giving. It wasn't serving. This book just went and put me in such a slump. And it just was not. It was not my ministry. I gave this book two stars. I didn't really relate to anything. I didn't relate to any of the characters. I didn't care. Um, the twist that was supposed to be a twist wasn't really a twist because I saw it come in. It was, it was okay. It was lackluster. It actually really let me down. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually super sad about that. It just wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Anyway, let me just tell y'all what the book about. So this is about Jill Newman. She is, she goes to like this really preppy, 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 prestigious school. Um, but she's not like not like the other girls or whatever she joins this secret society they have this app where you can get all the answers to all the tests that you would ever need she doesn't really use it because of course she just wants to study and get her self together herself her best friend Sheila Goodman died their freshman year her boyfriend confesses he's in jail and all of a sudden, three years later, he's like appealing his case. He's like, I didn't do it. I was forced to say that I did it. One day, Jill gets this text message from Graham's sister. And she's basically like, Ayo, so we need to talk because me and you both know that Graham didn't do this. Rachel and Adam used to date. Now, this is when I started thinking that something was up. Because when a guy tells you that the girl was crazy or the girl is crazy but doesn't give you a reason why they're saying that the guy is the problem okay and that's just some free advice tell them coco told you child ugh. and then the twist that they try to make a twist i don't know if it's because my intuition's on 10 on 100 on 1000 i already saw it coming and i said this ain't it the twist that i thought was a twist was twistier than the twist that actually was the twist. The twist that had me like, oh my god, this is shaking the table. Wasn't the real twist. It was giving me very much Pretty Little Liars. Very much Gossip Girls. But... The filler episodes. Yeah, that's it. I'm just actually really disappointed. I don't want to talk about this one no more. Next we have Novellius Jordan's Pedigree Penitentiary, which is the second book to his, I don't know if the, does the series have a name? 
to School of the Woven Way, I gave this book three stars. So this book follows Julia Puy still. So at the end of the first book, him and his friends get arrested for... I don't want to give y'all too much, but they get arrested for doing something that needed to be done. It was an ends justify the means situation, but apparently the courts did not feel the same way because him and his friends get arrested. But of course, Julian and his friends, they escape. They meet Ava and Salvador, who were actually, who had the bodies of teenagers, so I guess like 16, 17 year olds, but were actually like alive in the 1900s and then this is when they find out that the guy that they're supposed to be killing was developing this potion that would allow people to stay young forever and he was kidnapping children and testing the experiments out on them unfortunately a lot of the children ended up dying I love the characters so much I see a little bit of myself and the people I love most in each of these characters and I think that Novellius Jordan does an amazing job of making the characters personal personable people you feel like you can really just sit down and eat with speaking of eat let me just take me a little a little nibble because baby talking about these books had me all stressed and excited child i done forgot i had food in front of me baby i ain't give me a hot plate it's a little cold <sighs> and he does an amazing job with explaining this magic system once you get into julian's grace my next dungeons and dragons campaign i'm gonna talk to the dungeon master about letting me have this power because that don't sound litty okay boom setting they end up in atlantis the lost city of atlantis with miles and the princess they're not really in there but that atlantis however i only gave this book three stars let me tell you why this book was so wordy now y'all know and if you don't know now you know baby baby I love absolutely love a literary fiction the awakening love great expectations love it reads like a literary fiction which I appreciate but it was just too much there were just certain sections of the book where it was like I would read a paragraph and then I would go to the next paragraph to continue with the story obviously and I would forget what I read in the previous paragraph so I found myself having to go back and like reread sentences 5, 6, 7, 12, 87 times to, to the point where it was it felt like it was 84 years since I was reading this book that's it it was just very frustrating that was literally the only issue. Next book I read was Artemis Fowl book one by okay well can y'all see that because this lighting is this is the first one there are eight books in the series and nine books in the series something crazy like that. I gave it four stars it's actually as good as I remembered it. However these chapters baby these chapters were long baby these chapters were thick it's no reason for chapter 7 to be 57 pages long anyway this book follows Mr. Artemis Fowl Jr. they are looking for fairies because they are looking for gold why do he does he need gold actually I don't remember why he needs gold but he just wanted all the gold he needed all the gold and he was gonna get all the gold now you meet Holly Short who is a fairy who works for the LEP which is like the the secret service of like magic creatures or whatever mind you Artemis is just out here living his best living his best life and she gets caught up with him Artemis is 12 years old living at home supposed to be going to school ain't going to school because he's being a diabolical mastermind I'm still as confused as I was as when I read this as a young warthog in the magical people creature department the rep was on point on fleek on fliz Nye, and I loved it but anyway last but not least I read Kingdom of Souls by Rena Baron I gave this book four stars 
This book follows Aura. She comes from a family of powerful witch doctors, but unfortunately, she does not possess any of the any of the powers. She can't read bones. She can't perform any type of ritual. The only thing is that she can see magic around other people. Like she's going to these full moon rituals, like every year or whatever, and she's thinking that she'll just never have magic, and she's okay with that. Not really, but like she's pretending to be okay with that. But then the kids, the children in her village start disappearing and at first she's like, okay, this is weird, but like, again, not my business. There's nothing I can do anyway. The only thing I can do is to get these uh, bones from some of, from one of these sellers and I can perform a, a ritual and trade a few years of my life for some demon magic. I will say that there was a lot going on. Your good sis, she, me, her. Coco was overwhelmed. When I tell you overwhelmed, it was just a lot. There was just a lot going on. It was just stressful. I was stressed out. Stressed up, down, side to side, left to right. I was stressed. Let me do my little outro now, child. Alright, that's all I have for you for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And again, if you're in the Philadelphia area, don't forget to check out King Cobb's Kitchen, all right? Now, I have to go because I have more food to eat. I have more books to read. Yeah, that's it. Just food and books. Yeah. But I will see you seeing me in the next one. Bye!